Uh, we can get started now and I hope you're all well and keeping safe. I'll quickly be introducing Walking Tree for anyone joining us for the first time. Walking Tree is a technology focused company with a core focus on designing and building cross platform web and mobile applications, perform system integrations, and enable digital transformation. We also specialize in data integration, data analytics, migration from legacy to modern systems, cloud migrations, and of course, perform UX design. Apart from end-to-end -end application development, we also provide custom solutions to enterprises for web and mobile, very specific services within the software development cycle like UI, UX design, microservices, DevOps, and cloud. Our flexible staff augmentation services provide clients with on-demand skills and resources to help uh, meet organizational and business objectives. That is with our sister concern, that is Walking Tree Resources. Lastly, we also help you to implement certain solutions like objective performance assessment. We are also one of the key partners for implementation of Digit, which is one of the open source platform for urban governance. Now, today, again, uh, we have two presenters. Alok is the co-founder and managing director of Walking Tree. His experience in application development, data management, and modernization spans almost 20 years now. He has recently co-authored a book uh, that is JavaScript for Modern Web Development. You can find that on Amazon. Raj Shekhar is a UX architect. He has a total experience of over two decades in design and experienced usability analyst. He comes with multiple certifications in UI UX. So that was about us and our presenters for today. Over to you, uh, Alok, to just begin the se this session. Sure. Uh, Raj, uh, can you go to the next slide? Uh, thank you. So good morning, uh, good evening, everyone. I hope you guys are staying safe and uh, thank you for joining us. So, so before uh, I get started, I'm assuming that you know um, uh, some of you might have attended our previous uh, webinar. If not, then uh, definitely go ahead and um, you know visit that recording. Perhaps you can share that uh, as part of the. Uh, follow up communication. Uh, for some of you who are joining for the first time, I'll quickly run through uh, some of the topics that I discussed as part of my previous uh, discussion. And uh, I'll quickly sum up what I see as part of emerging UX trend. And then um, Raj will give us a deep dive into augmented reality. So, um, when, when I look at emerging UX trends, um, I look at from two perspectives. One is that, you know, um, say for regular web applications or websites, what's the trend? And then second thing, when I look at, I look at from the technology side, how the technology is changing the way we should be thinking as a designer or, you know, how it is influencing the overall UX trend. Um, on the say, interface side, of course, there are new layouts coming in, there are new animations coming in, people are experimenting with fonts and you know, orientations, etc. Uh, color and all these things have been, it has been talk of the town for many years now, it no longer excites people, but then people want to see certain level of dynamism. So that, that is always there, but then these are still being seen as more of a superficial things. Important, but then not, not critical in the overall experience journey right now. Where I see things getting more exciting is um, the technology advancement which is taking place. That's creating a lot of opportunity for us as a designer to bring in different kind of experience. And specifically in the situations like today where pandemic has forced many of us to stay home, the, the consumption for digital content has 
increased many fold and acceptance for technology for different purposes have increased significantly i mean if you would have asked a few months ago that you know just put your child to education through distance learning i mean many parents would have debated for days but now i think most of the parents are more supportive of online education right now rather than they sending their kids to school now this is just one example but the point here is that this has become true in most of the areas be it travel be it hospitality or any any area you pick up people are avoiding travel and does that mean that people do not want to talk to each other does that mean that people do not want to feed each other the answer is they do but then that's where technology has to pitch in and i believe augmented reality um add mixed reality into that or maybe so certain flavor of extended reality i mean these are the things which are definitely playing a critical role in giving that real time or a near real time experience now people are still shopping i mean they are still browsing through the say websites of the retail uh, shops and then they they are still trying to purchase things but then the kind of flexibility that you had in a physical space in terms of retail for example let's say when you are buying grocery right um, most of the time you will see at the checkout that you will have um, not so expensive but pretty attractive items like battery chocolates or you know some of the small gift items hanging around there and with with you know the purpose that it will catch your attention and then uh, your impulsive mind will end up buying that now the thing here is that how do you bring in that experience in uh, say digital world i mean you can build check out thing but then uh, how do you make sure that based on the overall uh, experience that the customer has or the behavior that customer has shown you are able to position not so expensive but then you know attractive content which this user may end up picking in the in the in his card and then end up buying that how do you influence those things now these are the design challenges that we will have to solve to make sure that you know people are having as near experience as they you know possible with respect to what they were having in the physical world similarly you know um for last couple of months what i'm hearing is that you know um the banks want to uh, you know they want to go to uh, digital uh, say uh, mode where where say for example they want to ensure that people get that physical experience for example if somebody is giving car loan now earlier what used to happen is that you get a proper test drive and then eventually uh, say there will be a lead generation happening for the car companies and there's a proper tie up and then the loan origination will happen now if you want to allow people to explore more options in terms of different different car and then you want to see who could be a potential customer how do you improve that experience how do you mix the physical expectations with the virtual you know experience and then create almost like as if it's a real life experience now all the challenges we definitely have to sort it out um, as part of our overall design responsibilities um remaining things which 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 i talked in the uh, previous webinar i'll say voice user interface is something which which continues to excite me uh, forever i mean when i look at my 5 year old son and then uh, although he may not know the spellings of many word but then what he definitely knows is to put the microphone button on google and then speak whatever he wants to search and then he's precisely able to identify what videos he wants to look at and what contents he wants to see and he's able to navigate that without knowing the spellings or you know without being able to type things again i mean that may make them lazy that may slow down their learning curve in terms of writing but then 
from the user's perspective, if you notice, people are finding it easier to use voice and voice user interfaces to access digital content. And with the availability of Alexa, Google Assistant, Siri, these tools are not unfamiliar to them. I mean, they know that through voice they can access a lot of quality digital content over the web. Now it's up to us how we want to design the experience and how do we you know, make it more productive for our end users. And then um, tons of other things like cross-platform experience, conversational uh, you know, experience and uh, uh, bringing in more and more personalization uh, into the overall uh, uh, say interactions even the consumption of 3Ds and uh, uh, basically uh, bringing in the uh, various courses through 3Ds, you know, uh, to give better experience to people. I mean, all these are becoming uh, very, very critical nowadays. Where I see uh, demand slowing down a little bit is, you know, in terms of offline access, uh, Although this is definitely important and a couple of months ago, I would have emphasized that this is kind of the must have thing. But, but of late when I see you know, requirements coming in, there, there's not so much emphasis on offline thing and probably it's situational right now, you know, since people are not traveling a lot, so people do not see a need. But then again, things like offline access was very important. It is still important, I believe, the moment even slight bit of movement starts where people will start visiting offices and factories where internet accessibility will be low. Uh, definitely things like offline access will become equally important. One thing which I definitely wanted to emphasize is something like internationalization and localization. With, with uh, digital consumptions being so high, uh, people are in search of uh, solutions which, which takes care of their need. And people are you know, very, very open to explore without any national boundaries. And when I look at uh, some of the schools in Hyderabad, um, I see products from Malaysia being used here. Uh, and these products are very well structured. I mean, they allow you, your kids to submit your, uh, you know, uh, their assignments very nicely. Teachers are able to grade them very nicely. And all these things are possible because uh, they have decent support for internationalization and um, in, in the language of your uh, choice. Although for me, I mean, kids are in the English medium, so it, I cannot notice the difference, but I'm sure there are other schools which are using these products and they have these solutions available in their native language. Now, these kind of considerations allows businesses to uh, sell product across the national boundaries. And this is something which definitely is in demand, specifically for the uh, products made for the masses and enterprises. Accessibility is again something that you can imagine now that you know, all kind of ages and all kind of literacy level are involved in uh, accessing digital content. So, so accessibility has become uh, definitely one, one very important aspect. Well, um, sometimes what happens is that when you get a lot of users um, uh, forced to use digital content, you put the accessibility on the back burner, you focus on functionality more. But again, I mean, what we need to remember is that the experience that we will leave with the users, that will define the stickiness of those users with our product. And that's where accessibility is going to play a very important role. And last, you know, when I think of so much content being utilized, security is definitely one top concern. So generally what we do is we leave security concerns to backend engineers or say cloud service providers to help us with that. However, as a designer, definitely we should be figuring out what, you know, security measures we need to take so that uh, not just the back end, but even the front ends are secure and, and uh, the applications that we build should be unbreakable. So the deal is that as, a, as a designer, we need to have the, this holistic view, understand the trends that we are observing and then uh, you know, catch on that. 
And in this whole cycle, one thing I haven't mentioned very explicitly, and I think it has become a, quite a bit of implicit now is that, you know, any product you pick up today, any product you pick up, um, AI is embedded there, or at least some part of AI is getting embedded in some, some way. So now saying that, you know, my product is artificial intelligence enabled or say AI driven or ML driven, I mean, that, this is no longer a, you know, selling point. I mean, this has become a regular expectation and that's where I think as a designer also, we need to start thinking that, you know, when things or when contents are available as part of overall uh, machine learning, how do we design our experience so that the overall experience will become more smart. So I'll say overall, you know, technology is actually driving a lot of experience. And uh, as, as a designer, it's an exciting time to be, uh, you know, designing applications today. And uh, specifically in that context, I, I feel that, you know, augmented reality and mixed reality is something which, which is definitely occupying a lot of space. I'll let Raj continue with his discussion uh, on augmented reality now. Uh, thanks, Alok. Thanks for the, uh, you know, overview of uh, the future arenas. Uh, before we uh, dig in, uh, I want you guys to, uh, you know, let me know your thoughts about what augmented reality is. So we're going to have a, a simple question about uh, your uh, thinking about augmented reality, which I'm going to post onto the screen now. Can you guys uh, uh, see the question on the screen? So please answer them I mean, whichever, uh, uh, you know, option you think is uh, relevant. I can see two people answered the question. Yeah, four of 17, five, six. Ten of 17, 11. Few more guys. I mean, it's twelve. Probably we are looking for another five people to vote uh, or answer for it. Uh, anyone uh, having difficulties to see the question on the screen? I think that's pretty much it. Uh, let's uh, close uh, uh, this uh, session and we'll talk about the results at the end. Um, so let's go ahead and dig into, uh, you know, what augmented reality is all about and how we are going to do the UX for this augmented reality platform. So uh, in definition, what is, what is augmented reality? Augmented reality is nothing but, you know, superimposing or augmenting the objects onto a real video or a real environment. So it's, it's very simple. So by definition, it says augmentation of programmed objects or interactions on a real time video. So uh, having said that, UX itself as of now is complex enough for uh, the UX designers to uh, to consider the psychological, the interaction, the geological, the um, you know cultural and software uh, boundaries. Everything has to be considered to create a best UX design. So. As if that's not enough, AR is one area 
which is throwing uh, you know challenges to this uh, ux designers wherein the ux designers have to break their boundaries and think out of the box to get the best solutions or the best uh, results for the uh, optimum uh, user experience so that's where it is becoming more interesting because it 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 is always challenging uh, the ux designers to push themselves to the uh, boundaries okay <clears throat> now how is it different from uh, virtual reality the one that we discussed uh, in the in our last session virtual reality is where you have to uh, uh, you know use an equipment which is co which covers your eyes and there is a virtual environment that will be created by the computer wherein i mean you are completely cut off from the actual real world whereas augmented reality though it is also related to 3d objects uh, which are superimposed and also the interactions for those 3d objects the the catch is you don't have to wear a particular uh, you know hardware like goggles or you know oculus or anything to experience those objects number one number two it also doesn't need uh, robust hardware to do augmented reality those are the simple two major differences between virtual reality and augmented reality if we go a little uh, further so i mean if you see any of these uh, you know arms you can clearly uh, might have experienced any of the uh, you know the ones that i have shown on the screen most importantly if uh, you own a car or if you own a uh, if any of your family members own a car you definitely might have experienced this uh, screen which is nothing but a reverse camera screen where in amni if you see the blue lines which actually depicts the depth as well as the direction that it is uh, that is supposed to go which means when I mean, it is straight and if you see the yellow ones uh, th these i mean for the expensive cars or the uh, you know luxury cars i mean we can see in india but if you uh, drove a car in europe or us you can definitely might have experienced kind of you where I mean, when you uh, steer the uh, you know wheels you can actually see the direction or and the angle that the car is going to back up so these are nothing but the augmentation of the directions and the path on to the reverse camera so this is a simple example of how um, augmentation can be utilized in a day to day life and uh, uh, coming to this this picture if you see there is a stool uh, which has been placed on the floor this is the uh, you know augmented reality software that ikea is using i mean if you go to ikea or a website or if you go to ikea store they will definitely uh, ask you to install the uh, the ar software so that you can actually feel how the furniture is going to fit in your room dimensions so it's not like i mean you you have to use your imagination and see i mean if i buy this chair where will it fit i mean will it be too congested to walk or anything i mean you can actually keep it on to the uh, floor virtual uh, you know uh, virtually and see if that makes any sense and based on that you can go for your purchase <clears throat> i'll i'll come to this uh, later and this i think i mean most of you might have been uh, familiar I mean, even if you have to kill some time or if you are if you want to post some funny uh, faces of yours uh, recently i mean uh, you might have seen that most of the uh, you know uh, images they are they are changing the gender from male to female and female to male and see how they would look and that's that's a, a very funny thing but yeah uh, snapchat uh, and uh, facebook messenger are the best tools for this reference where in a minute it's it's going to augment couple of objects on top of your face to make it uh, you know uh, to bring the effects <clears throat> this is the most used augmented reality on a day to day basis i'm not sure how many of you are uh, game fanatics but i mean if you know any uh, you know uh, basics of game this is a pokemon game which is very famous uh and uh, initially it has been banned in couple of countries and then again they said okay uh, it's okay to play yeah this is this is where i mean it actually augments the objects or you know the ca catching the pokemon different pokemons onto the uh real time video world 
so this this would be another best example and uh, you know if you see this image we might be very familiar with uh, internet internationalization right i mean wherein we can select the language that we have to and uh, go through the site now the challenge there is you have to know that language what if you ended up in a in a country where you don't know the language and you have to uh, you know traverse there augmented reality there are softwares where which can actually read uh, google glass uh, goggles is is the best example it actually reads what the signs are and translates immediately uh, onto your screen which actually will uh, help us in a lot of ways especially the directions the uh, you know traffic signals and everything so uh, when i remember the point that i said that the uh, it is the augmented reality is throwing challenges where we have to push uh, our boundaries as designers to see what is the maximum or, or the optimum uh, you know experience that we can bring to the users this is one example not only this i mean if you if you are familiar with any of the sports channels i mean be it cricket or baseball or american football or anything if you see the uh, the arrows that the commentators are going to draw and the score card and uh, the projections even uh, for the matter of fact uh, the elections uh, the exit polls and the uh, polls you see those uh, 3d graphics which are uh, imposed on to the video those are nothing but augmented reality so we know that um, an augmented reality is there in and around us only thing is we might not know the terminology that's all okay the while uh, when these these are the uh, you know areas that uh, augmented reality that we are experiencing and how to before you even go ahead and design uh, an experience for augmented reality there are a couple of things which i would like to mention to be more cautious is one is about uh, uh, the uh, transparent and translucent uh, uh, you know uh, designs so i mean uh, everybody might be familiar with the terminology what is uh, translucent and uh, transparent transparent is where i mean you can see the uh, you know object whereas translucent is where you have that blurred effect and you can hardly see through it this is very important while designing the experiences because we have to pick them very carefully and very intelligently based on the need of the application itself say for example if i am designing something for a uh, directions right or a path and if i use this translucent ui then there is every chance that the you I mean the view is blocked for the user and uh, anything can happen so that is a transparent ui whereas if i have to make sure that the text or anything has to be readable or selection of an object has to be done on the screen that's where i have to use the translucent ui the this is very unique uh, uh, you know uh, problem that we face when we uh, try to design some experience in augmented reality because even in virtual reality this is not a problem because the environment itself is created by us so we can always play around with it but here it's a real time uh, experience so um, i'm not sure how many of you are uh, aware of this but i mean there are uh, uh, you know helmets which are coming into the market which actually can project the directions uh, from your google maps on to the uh, windshield of your helmet so the uh, that's where i mean it's it's again augmented reality and that's where we have to be very careful about you know where to use the translucent and the transparent ui and for to demonstrate this i am taking uh, one of the experience uh, from uh, torches uh, ar screen it's a, it's basically a fun uh, app where you can uh, you know uh, post some uh, objects on to the video and if you see the chairs and everything these are very transparent but for selection and searching just because it is uh, you know related to text that's where he made it as translucent even the close or uh, any of those uh, options so it's a it's a very good combination mean, i took this example because i felt this is a very good combination of how a transparent and a translucent both together can be handled so i'm just taking an example here uh, thanks to uh, torch uh, uh, screen i'm using this their screen here 
so that's that's the major uh, you know challenge that we come up when we are designing something for uh, augmented reality yeah. and uh, if you go further what are the guidelines for augmented reality uh, ux uh, uh, designs it's almost mostly similar to what we have in virtual reality but uh, we have a little edge here because number one the user is not blocked from his uh, uh, vision of sight that means i mean he will be aware of the uh, you know surroundings and uh, uh, he can actually glance uh, what is uh, going on through the video or uh, you know around him and as i said earlier the hardware is not to uh, rob us so we can use our uh, mobile phones or ipads or tablets uh, for uh, experiencing these augmented reality uh, apps okay so uh, when it comes to the guidelines so everything has to be reactive i mean in a in a augmented reality world it has to be reactive rather than uh, interactive okay don't make the user walk backwards i mean this is a general norm when we are uh, you know dealing with uh, any of the hardware like uh, mobile or uh, tablet or fab because that their focus will be on the on the screen and they they might be uh, you know uh, they might have a little bit of uh, difficulty in uh, glancing what is around so it's always a best practice when, especially when when we are designing something for uh, vr and ar or mixed reality for the matter of fact that you should not make the user to walk backwards and if that is not uh, inevitable make sure that the movement is very slow so that i mean he is very cautious and uh, you know very careful while walking backwards uh, again as i said in the previous slide uh, translucent and transparent designs uh, has to be dealt very carefully as an uh, when needed and uh, uh, in augmented reality ra rather than giving uh, uh, you know uh, interactions directly we should leave more cues to the uh, user uh, the reason could be multiple i'll just uh, mention one or two uh, number one we are imposing the 3d objects on to the world right there is every chance i mean uh, you know i'm not saying that you, you you don't have to be perfect but i mean if you're perfect users will find it hard to identify what a 3d object is and what a real video is i mean if if the object itself is perfect so there should be some demarcation or differentiation in uh, you know uh, telling the user that hey i mean this is virtual thing i mean don't don't think that this is real one and also i mean especially like uh, you know uh, cycling uh, or uh, you know jogging tracks and uh, you know uh, hiking tracks when you are designing anything uh, for those <clears throat> make sure that you are giving uh, enough uh, visual clues because the uh, the reaction time will be very less because of the pace so uh, visual clues have to be uh, very key in those kind of designs uh, so the that's where i uh, added this point that i mean there, there should be more cues to the user for them to understand the Uh, behavior or the pattern of these uh, objects in the uh, augmented reality world restrict motions to interactions uh, you know don't uh, just for the sake of uh, you know fun or anything don't make the user to uh, walk sideways or back backwards or uh, you know run uh, on the uh, things uh, so which is uh, uh, you know uh, a hazard for personal safety uh and design for your uh, for the physical space i mean uh you have to understand how the uh, uh the perspective is and how the depth uh, depth of vision is and accordingly you have to design the experiences as well so um and also uh, other than the guidelines if i have to uh, mention what could be the uh, why ar why augmented reality why not virtual reality or why not you know any of these interactions what why should we go for augmented reality uh this is my personal opinion and also a couple of discussions that i uh, uh that i experienced uh, when i attended the augmented reality uh, workshops uh, around the world if you can actually utilize the ar properly with the devices and the hardware that we have in uh, handy right now 
like 80 percent of the manual instructions which are printed on a paper can be eliminated now how will that help us by all means because number one it is not erasable and there is no chance that you are going to lose it number two i mean it's very good for the environment number three you can always keep an archive of uh, even uh, even the older uh, you know items that you have in your in your uh, possession so that that was the uh, thought process even 5 years ago uh, the pace that it is going may be slow but it is definitely going towards it uh, there are big companies uh, uh, like automotive industry microsoft google uh, you know there are all the top hats are investing on in augmented reality and how they can benefit from this uh, to their business you know th that's just a uh, area of focus uh, so that uh, you know you can actually think of ar and how to design your experiences in ar now what are the tools that we need to uh, design the ar uh, uh, experiences i always emphasize this and I, again i am emphasizing the best tool that i can ha ever have if when it's related to the experiences is pen and a paper or a pencil and a paper i mean nothing can beat beat that so i always uh, you know say that that that's the start other than these i mean yes i mean you can use sketch and xd uh, for uh, prototyping and uh, designing the uh, mockups or screen uh, or the layouts for uh, you uh, ar experiences i would recommend the best would be the sketchbox ar or apple's low tech prototyping which actually works on the web web world and you can design your experiences in ar using these uh, frameworks uh, these are open source so uh, it, it's easy for you to log in and uh, create an account and utilize it uh, and if you are really into uh, augmented reality and if you know the uh, you know augmented reality itself as a software here are the frameworks that uh, uh, that are uh, exclusive for uh, augmented reality that's proto io uh, wire ar frame torch ar halo unity i mean these are different frameworks that where we can uh, design and develop ar applications so that's about uh, um, augmented reality and how we can uh, design uh, user experience screens in augmented reality our next topic uh, for the future uh, uh, arenas of ux is uh, mixed reality mixed reality uh, has mostly been uh, you know supported by microsoft uh, and uh, hololenses so when you refer to mixed reality in uh, in the web the first thing that you might uh, you know come across is uh, microsoft or uh, hololenses but the concept of mixed reality is very interesting i mean if you if you see virtual reality you have a virtual environment that is created which is completely detached from the real world and uh, the experience itself is the user will be immersed i mean uh, into that virtual uh, world whereas augmented reality you are in the uh, real world but the objects are imposed onto the real world mixed reality is where these two uh, realities will club together in the sense you do augmented augmentation for the real world uh, for the real world uh, and you can also change the environment using the virtual reality but still keep the uh, actual uh, world uh, scenarios within the screen i'll show you how uh, before we go there i mean uh, this is the uh, microsoft definition of what a mixed reality is it's nothing but the combination of augmented reality and virtual reality uh, you know together wherein the virtual reality is a boundary and augmented reality is placed within the boundaries of virtual reality microsoft definition says i mean it's a result of blending physical world with digital world so it's a very very simple uh, definition but i mean uh, the experiences are really different so if you see this 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 person is wearing a you know a hardware uh, it's a mi uh, mixed reality uh, hardware and this is his room right now if you see this would be the augmentation of the objects 
on, within the uh, room premises, right? So this is this is nothing but AR. So where you can see the uh, real world. On top of it, the uh, objects are uh, augmented here. So the next one is this is virtual reality, wherein the complete the, the complete background has been uh, vanished, and the virtual uh, uh, room or a virtual uh, environment has been created with the superimposed objects, right? So this is virtual reality. This is augmented reality. When you cup these two, this is what the experience is going to be. Now, if you see, this is a sofa that he is standing in front of, and this is the room dimensions. And if you see the background, it's all virtual reality. That means in virtual world, it's also displaying the actual world with augmented objects. That's what is mixed reality and the beauty of mixed reality is all about. So it actually gives the space, the physical space around the user, which is less uh, hazardous for the user to move, uh, you know, uh, within the boundaries, and also augments a virtual world as well as objects on top of the uh, physical environment. So that's that's a uh, way that mixed reality has been uh, uh, designed. Now again, for uh, designing the experiences for uh, mixed reality, the guidelines are, uh, you know, as a, you, I'm not sure, I mean, how many of you have attended the virtual reality part, but I mean, in the, in the virtual reality, if you see the guidelines, and if you see the guidelines in uh, augmented reality, mixed reality is a mixture of these two guidelines. So uh, it's, I mean, everything should be reactive, uh, as, we, as you all know. Uh, don't make user to uh, walk backwards. Uh, as we were uh, discussing in the augmented reality as well. This is a general norm. Uh, use uh, uh, demarcations uh, for physical space. Just like I said, I mean, if this is a physical space, so we need to use those demarcations. Use more cues. Uh, this, this point is, uh, again, from uh, augmented reality. Restrict motions to interactions. Augmented reality. And design for physical space. Augmented reality. So if you see the guidelines, if you know the guidelines of what Virtual reality and augmented reality, you don't need to know uh, new guidelines for uh, mixed reality. It's as simple as that. Now, again, when it comes to the tools, my best friend is pencil and paper. Other than that, Sketch and XD or Figma, uh, any of these, you can uh, uh, create a experience or the, or the screens or the visuals for uh, uh, designing for uh, mixed reality. But the recommended or uh, mixed reality toolkit, which is supported by Microsoft, MRTK. Uh, if you are familiar with uh, Unity uh, uh, and Unreal uh, frameworks or the virtual reality uh, frameworks, then nothing like it. You can design the experiences, uh, UX uh, experiences there itself. Euphoria is another framework where you can design your screens and layouts. Uh, for this mixed reality. And again, I mean, Euphoria also works to some extent for uh, augmented reality as well. So that that's the end of, uh, you know, today's uh, discussion points for the emerging arenas of UX and how we are uh, supposed to design the UX for these uh, emerging arenas. Uh, for today's topic, it's uh, augmented reality and uh, mixed reality. And those who haven't attended the previous session for virtual reality, which is a very uh, little longer session, you can always contact us so that we can uh, share the recordings for that uh, session as well. Uh, any questions, guys? Now right. Uh, thank, thanks a lot, uh, Raj. Uh, guys, if you have any questions, please put them into the Q&A box. Uh, please share recording for virtual reality. Venki, uh, I, uh, we will be mailing you the recorded version of this webinar as well as the previous one so that you're able to make sense out of both. So, meanwhile, Raj, if you could share the results of the, of the poll that you had conducted. Yes, yes. Yeah, I mean, I want to see I mean, if somebody has a questions. I want to reveal that uh, in the end. <laughs> Right. Uh, we have a question from Venki. He's asking, can you tell something about React VR? I can't see that question. About what? About React VR. Oh, yeah. No, I didn't recall. Uh, 
okay can you tell something about uh, react wear yeah. uh, this uh, framework i'm i'm uh, not really familiar with uh, winky but uh, if you really want to know about it i can definitely touch base with you i mean if you can leave your email id i i, I can uh, touch base with you uh, on a one on one to one and i can uh, share uh, much more uh, details about it let me note it down so we have venki's email id uh, what about okay we have one uh, from pbr krishna how to implement this into education application one second uh, krishna i'm noting down uh, these points okay uh, how to implement this into education applications oh the sky is the limit uh, krishna say for example i mean i'll just take a uh, simple example of a pendulum right so we we all know that we studied uh, uh, in uh, physics uh, in our uh, uh, mid schools right and we always imagined the uh, you know the flow of the pendulum and uh, how uh, you know it's going to move or uh, it's going to swing and all those right now imagine that you have a vr okay i mean i'm not sure if you're uh, familiar with these uh, uh big uh, you know benq screens which is touch based and uh, you know augmented reality as well as chalkboards i mean right now that's that's the trend uh, in education so if you can use uh, you know any of those high end equipment and if you use this uh, uh, you know augmented reality wherein you are going to display a qr code on to the screen and anybody who wants to see the movement of a pendulum or the formula or anything you just scan the qr code on the screen from your mobile which is on the tv or anything and it will uh, you know project a uh, 3d object there so th- i'm just taking a simple example there i mean even be it newton's uh, uh, you know laws of motion or the chemical combinations the atoms neutrons positrons protons whatever i mean you the sky is the limit and even for uh, you know uh, mitochondria or the parts of a human digestive system you name it all you have to do is create a qr code for the uh, you know the 3d model that you have created in uh, uh, augmented reality and that's it i mean they can easily experience each and every uh, uh, inch and bit of it right venki has also asked us uh, tell us something about bringing virtual reality to the yes. web browser it's already uh, uh, you know the uh, how to put it um it's not even in the uh, uh, experimental mode the, actually i mean if you see uh, the mobile uh, uh, mobile phones that we are carrying they are uh, already 3d uh, compatible in the sense it actually can uh, you know render the 3d objects on to the screen the difficulty hurdle has already been passed now that coming into picture it won't be any wonder down the line probably in 6 months to 1 year all the menus that we that we follow like you know uh, a burger menu which actually expands all those can be converted into 3d or augmented uh, you know uh, objects so it's already in place and in web i mean if you remember the uh, you know uh, the frameworks that i mentioned uh, those are all related box apple's like prototyping all these are web uh, you know uh, web based uh, uh, prototyping so it's already there uh, uh, in uh, place also there are there are uh, uh, you know a couple of uh, video games which is completely web based um, and uh, uh, just like a nintendo v that you use to perform some actions on the screen augmented reality has already designed some uh, games wherein i mean you are going to show a qr code on your uh, body which actually fits an armor on top of you and you can uh, you know perform now not only that the virtual uh, uh, your yeah, clothing stores uh, and dress rooms virtual you know hairstyles all these uh, you know augmented reality in web is completely filled with 
now you know all you have to do is you need to have that perspective in where they have created these uh, augmented reality items and you can definitely find lens card for the matter of fact it uses uh, you know augmented reality to wrap the glasses onto your face i mean all you have to do is you have to upload a, uh, your uh, uh, photo and it actually creates a uh, a near to uh, perfect uh, uh, wireframe uh, of your uh, face and it wraps the glasses on top of your face and so that you can see how it looks from outside i need end to end software requirements and the plan to implement these into education apps well that itself will become a uh, you know project of its own uh, krishna but yes yeah. i mean we can do it for you yeah absolutely please do share your evil id we would like to reach out to you yes Uh, any other questions from anyone? Krishna FB at gmail dot com. Right. Okay. So I think uh, right. these are all the. Not in uh, Krishna. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, right, Frankie. <laughs> uh, any other questions, guys? From anyone? Uh, no i think this is about uh, all we have so before we uh, you know uh, say it uh, day i want to show the uh, results uh, real quick can you guys see this uh, you know results on the screen so most of them they said and technology that overlays digital information on top of real world yeah, absolutely 50% of them answered it correct so i um, mean which says that i mean you have uh, uh, you know uh, basic idea of what augmented reality is yeah and now uh, as i said uh, if you can uh, open your perspective of uh, where this augmented reality we are already using you will be wondered uh, you know uh, how many areas it already is uh, implemented so that's about the poll uh, andres yeah back to you uh, pranshu right so i suppose that's all we have for today uh, before we sign off for the day i'll just wanted to let you guys know that we have an interesting line of webinars coming up next month so please uh, keep watching this space i'll be obviously sending invites to all of you as well as the recording of today's webinar and the one on virtual reality until next time folks thank you again uh, for joining us today thank you alok thank you raj Thank you all. Thank you.